Digital media is on the rise for both audio and video formats, but for the home theater enthusiast, streaming media like Netflix, Hulu, and the likes often provide a lackluster experience due to compression, artifacts, and the massive bandwidth required to stream high-resolution audio and video over the internet. But what if you could organize all of your 4K and Blu-ray digital media, as well as your high-resolution audio files from your computer or maybe a hard drive into one catalog with a flagship high-resolution media player? Today we'll be reviewing the brand new Neo Alpha Signature Edition Media Player from Zadu. Inside you'll find a small accessories box that contains the instruction manual, HDMI cable, Bluetooth backlit remote control, a screwdriver and screws for a hard drive, and a three-prong IEC power cable. The Neo Alpha Signature Edition comes double boxed, protected by thick foam inserts, and wrapped in a cloth pouch to protect it during transit. Removing the Neo Alpha from the pouch, we're presented with a really sleek and elegant, yet minimalistic front face with only a power button, headphone jack, two USB inputs, a massive five inch OLED touch display, which we'll look at in more detail later in this video, and a volume knob. Looking at the rear, you'll find the main power switch, optical output, two HDMI outputs that allow you the option of separating the audio from the video, IR input, RS-232, gigabit LAN, three digital inputs including optical, coaxial, and USB. There's also stereo RCA and XLR outputs, a bay capable of housing a 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch hard drive, and antennas for dual band Wi-Fi. You'll also notice on the top cover, we've got ventilation to help dissipate heat. Now for my setup, the only connections needed are the ethernet cable that connects to my network, an HDMI cable to my Marantz AV7706 processor, and the power cable. Once the Neo Alpha boots up for the first time, we'll choose our language. So I'll choose English and hit next. Use the up and down arrows to match the size of your screen. Select your time zone. Now since I connected with a landline, we've already got a network connection set up. To pair the remote via Bluetooth, we're gonna press and hold these two buttons for about three or four seconds. Once we're connected, we can go back to the previous menu. So now we see the remote is connected via Bluetooth, so we'll go to the next page. Next, we have two options. You can either choose the wizard mode, which is basically like an automatic setup of the unit. It's going to try to figure out the best uh, settings for the device, or you can choose expert and go right into the settings and manually make those adjustments. I'm gonna choose the wizard mode because later I'm gonna show you where you can change all of the settings at any point in time. So in my setup, I've got a Marantz AV7706 processor. So we're going to come down here to HDMI connects to a 2.0 AV receiver, which is then connected to the TV. In my case, that TV is a projector. So we'll choose that option and go to next. So here we have some settings that are just based on preference. So I'm just gonna quickly go through these so you can see what options we have in each one of these menu items. So you're going to want to set those based on your preference. I'm going to leave those just all as default. So now we're ready to jump into the main menu. So here we are at the main menu. The very first option here allows us to add audio content. So as you see here, it walks you step by step on how to set that up. I'm just going to hit next and then I'll walk you through it. So the first thing we're gonna do is click add folder. Now, depending on where your media is stored is going to determine which one of these items you're going to use. So in my setup, I have all of my media on a hard drive and that hard drive is connected to an Nvidia Shield. The Nvidia Shield is set up as a Plex server. 
And because the Neo Alpha is connected to my network, I can actually access that drive without having to physically remove it from my NVIDIA Shield and plug it directly into the Neo Alpha. So to do that, we're gonna come down to SMB. It's going to scan to see what's available. It sees my shield, so I'll select that. And it's gonna ask me for my username and password. Now I'm gonna switch over to my NVIDIA Shield and I'm gonna show you exactly where you would need to get this information from if you have it set up the same way in yours. So here we are in the NVIDIA Shield. We're gonna go all the way up to settings, come down to device preferences, go down to storage, and come all the way down to transfer files over local network. If this toggle is off, go ahead and turn that on if it's already on, like in my case, go ahead and click the enter button. So these are the login credentials we'll use over on the Neo Alpha to connect to the shield. So once you plug in your username, you'll need to go over to this right green arrow right here to get down to the next option. Once you have your password in, we'll go over to the green arrow once again. We'll hit it one more time and one more time to click OK. Now we're connected to my NVIDIA Shield. So if we click on the folder, it's going to navigate into that hard drive and show us all of the file structure. Now, since we're just adding music, we don't want to add any of these folders except for the music folder. So I'll go ahead and click here, come over and hit OK. Now I don't listen to a whole lot of music on my server, so I just have various tracks that I downloaded from the internet that are FLAC, as well as some other high resolution audio, just so we can test it and show you how it works. Now you can continue to add more folders by doing the same, but in this case, I'm gonna click the back. Next, we wanna add some video content. So we're gonna navigate over to the poster wall and click okay. Here we've got some options for adding child lock if you need that feature. And now we're gonna point the device to those sources just like we did for music. So we're gonna come up here to open sources, come down to add source. And as you can see, I no longer have to log in. This is already mapped to that demo drive. So we'll go ahead and click this option here. And since this is an NVIDIA Shield, we do have some folders that I really don't want to import. We don't have a need for the recycle bin or the Android. Um, I really don't need calibration tools on this. So I'm gonna manually choose the folders that I want. So we'll select the Oro 3 demos and come over here and hit OK. And you'll see this is going to begin to scan once we hit Start Scan. So we'll go ahead and click OK and we can continue to add sources while it's scanning. Once again, we'll come down to the demo drive. We'll add a folder here called Axpona 2019. Start the scan and just continue to add whatever folders that you want added to your device. Now, as you can see, this is gonna take quite a while to scan that entire hard drive in all of these folder structures. So I won't bore you with that. I'll go ahead and fast forward the video all right, so that took probably about 30 to 45 minutes. I didn't really time it, so I don't know exactly how long it took, but everything's finished, so we'll go ahead and back up to the main menu. So now you can see our movies are now going to begin to populate. All of the posters are going to begin to pull in, and we can go into movies, and we can see all the poster art here pulling in. Now I know on the NVIDIA Shield, some of the artwork does not pull in, and so I don't anticipate this to fill every uh, poster, but as you can see, it's starting to load them now. So if you navigate up to the top right, there's a menu, and on that menu, it gives us several options that we can cycle through. So if we click the first box, it puts it in a horizontal layout. So in this layout, all of the movie posters are going to be at the bottom, and then all of the content regarding to that or all the data regarding to that particular movie is found up here in the top. So you can of course navigate through, you can look at trailers. If you have a certain movie that you wanna set as a favorite, you can just check this star here and we'll do that on some movies here shortly. 
If we navigate back up to the far top right, we can choose that first option again for another layout. So this is more of a vertical layout. So we've got just text on the left and then the poster art is kind of in the middle and then all the remaining data is gonna to be to the far right and below that. So we'll go up again one more time and we'll choose that first option again and we're back to our main grid layout. We can navigate up there again. If we choose the second option, that allows us to sort by poster name. You can sort by rating, date, year, and so forth. The last two options either increase or decrease the size of the movie posters. So as you can see here, we can make them pretty large. I'm not a big fan of this size. I would probably rather have it maybe here, possibly maybe one more here. Now you can go one step smaller if you wanna be able to see it in a small layout, but then you lose the, the text underneath. So my preference is to be either here or probably here. So if we navigate all the way over to the far hamburger menu and click that, we have four options here. We can search. Now this is a little different. Let's say I was wanting to look for Iron Man. And so here I would click it once and then you can use the up, down, left, or right to choose the letter. So I would have to hit right for I. And then to do R, I would come down here, click it, and then I would hit down for the R. So it's a little different uh, the way that rolls. And then you can come over here and then click on the movie of your choice. We'll go back and back once more. And we'll go back into that hamburger menu. Our second option is to filter and we can set all different types of things. We can filter by 4K. We can filter by uh, the genre, a region, a year and so forth but right now we're gonna leave it set up to all. We'll go ahead and back out of there, back up once more. We'll go back into the hamburger menu. If we go to sources, that allows us to go directly into any one of those folders that we linked to earlier. We'll go ahead and back out, back out again, and we'll go back into that hamburger menu. And the final options is the settings. Now here we can set things like your child lock, language, Poster view is pretty cool because you have a lot of different options here. You can set your poster to large, small, medium, or overspread. You can choose to show your titles or not show the titles, show ratings or not ratings. So let's just say, for instance, we wanted to not show the titles. We can go ahead and back out. And so now you can see, even if we re, uh, increase the size, we don't have the title there. If we want to add that back, we go back into the menu, go back over to settings, come down to poster view, and put show title back on. So as you can see, you've got a lot of options here. And again, this is just for your preference. You set it up how it best works for you. And here you can see other various preferences that you can make inside the settings options. We'll go ahead and back out of this and I'm going to go ahead and change this back to, let's say right there. So here you can see we've already got some default categories. We've got all, movies, TV, unmatched would be ones that they don't find the artwork and it doesn't really know the metadata for those. They've even got an option if you're bored, it's going to randomly shuffle or spin and select a movie for you, which is pretty cool. Sources, again, takes us to the same area that you can select each individual folder that you've navigated to and, and mapped to. We'll back out of there. And then over here to the right, you can actually add more categories. So let's say, for instance, I want to come down here and add a category, and we're going to add a category, and we're going to call this, now let's just say 4K. So now if I back out, you can see I now have a 4K option. So that allows you to add some customization to this, again, for your movie preference watching. So if I go back to edit, let's say we want to come down to category, and let's say I don't have any TV content, so I can uncheck that, and that removes it from there. So again, I really love the functionality of this, 
And I love the fact that you just got a lot of flexibility to set it up exactly how you want it to look. Up at the top left, you can of course do your search. We'll back out of that. You can do a filter. We'll back out of that. So now let's go ahead and scroll down the poster wall to see what we've got. We've got a, a row that shows recently added movies. We've got a row here for um, different genres. So here we have action and science fiction. So we're going to go ahead and add some more. Let's say I want to come over here and add, well, let's say war. And then we'll add maybe one more, a thriller. So now if I back out, we've got action adventure, comedy, science fiction. And it was interesting because I saw several other ones that were checked, but they didn't show up first. So maybe that was a little glitch there, but now we can see each one that have been added. So let's say for instance, if we want to go into science fiction, all of the ones that have been tagged science fiction will populate. So that's a really nice feature. Again, I love the fact that you can customize this to your taste. Now, depending on what you've been watching, you'll get some recommended items down here. We haven't watched any content, so it's just grabbing a few right off the bat. So now, of course, if we go into something like action, and let's say we come down here to avatar, we'll click that. So here on the left, we've got a large poster. We've got quite a bit of metadata. You can also even navigate over here, see the director, I can click on that. So I love the fact that there's just so much interactivity um, that you can get all kinds of information. You can look at additional images. So it's just really, really interactive. And I love how we've got just a beautiful layout. I think this is done really, really nicely. Now, of course, to play the movie, we would click on the little triangle arrow up there. But if the movie happens to have a trailer, that's what that second option is for. So if I click that, it says there's no trailer available for this movie, but if there were, that's where this would take you. Lastly, over to the right, you can actually star a movie. So let's go ahead and star this. Let's say this is one that I really like. Now, if I back out to the main menu, back out again, and back out one more time, now down here, we can see we've got our favorites. And there's the avatar poster. So let's go ahead and navigate over to sources and I'm going to come down here to full length movies. So we'll drop down here to Lucy and we'll go ahead and launch that. We'll see how long it takes just to give you an idea of how long it takes to begin the movie and the movie is already starting. Now the one hiccup that I continue to run into with this player connected in my system is it would lose HDMI sync and I worked with their support team and we figured out that for whatever reason this isn't pairing up well with my projector and so we had to change the resolution down from 4k 60 to 4k 30. So in order to do that we navigate over here to display and I just need to come down to resolution and change this from auto and we're going to map that to 3840 by 2160 at 30 hertz. Now, once I made that setting change, I never really had any other HDMI hiccups during my testing period. So we've looked at the music player, the poster wall. The third option is the Media Center File Manager. Now, I really don't have a need for this because I mainly would use this for both music and movies, and we would use those first two icons, but I'll just show you the items that you have over here. If you hit to the left, you've got your device list, and then if you hit to the right, you can see you've got various options if you want to copy, paste, open with, delete, cut, and so forth. So this is kind of like a file browser here. So we'll go ahead and back out of that. The fourth option is apps. And so the apps are kind of limited. Um, you don't have apps like Netflix and Hulu and things like that, but that's not what this is for. This isn't a streaming media player. This is really to manage the content that is maybe on your hard drive. And the last icon on the far right is the settings. So we'll go ahead and go into that. So for those of you that really like to get in and tweak things, 
the Neo Alpha has a ton of features and a lot of settings that you have control over from uh, on the playback side of it. We've got the auto frame rate. We'll just take a look at a couple of settings here. You can set bookmarks. Of course, you got your default languages, 3D, function keys, play modes, as well as forcing subtitles and a few other options down here as well. The display tab allows you to change different things such as resolution, HDR, color settings, Dolby Vision settings, and so forth. So the one thing, as I mentioned earlier, that I had to change was from auto, and I had to change it down to uh, basically 4K at 30 hertz. For some reason, this player and my projector um, just did not see eye to eye. But by, re by reducing that down to 4K 30, I've had no issues with it whatsoever. So over here, we've got settings for your color based on you know, whether it's 4K 60, 4K 30 content, non 4K content. You can set your color range. So as you can see, I've set most of this to auto, but there's a lot of flexibility for those of you that really wanna get in and just kind of dive deep into these settings. We've got HDR settings here that you can update. If I go into the image parameter, this is kind of interesting. So here you can see, you can adjust how your image is going to look when it's converting from HDR to SDR. So we've got settings for brightness, contrast, hue, saturation, and you can come down here and click switch image and it'll show you something that has a little bit different color palette. So this is a little bit, uh, you know, some brighter highlights, so you can adjust that, click it again, You've got a lot of color saturation here, so you can tweak that if you so desire. And we'll go back to the original image and then back up to the main menu. Here we have settings for HDR. I've got it set to auto. I'm just letting it do its thing. And if you're so inclined though, you can come down here and change it to one of these settings here. So we'll just scroll all the way to the bottom so you can see what is available. Down here, we've got a few other additional settings. So again, it's just got a lot of customization. On the custom EDID, let's say for instance, you're having an issue with the unit, you can come over here, export this EDID file to say a thumb drive, email that thumb drive to tech support and they can kind of replicate that same set, those same settings on their end to see if they can duplicate the problem and help you troubleshoot that. So there may be some other applications for that, but that's one that I know of. For those of you that are audio buffs, you've got tons of flexibility again here on how the system processes audio. So we'll just kind of scroll through those so you can see the options here, whether it's HDMI, your uh, SPDIF, which is basically your fiber optic connection, USB audio, and so forth. Then we'll come all the way back up here as well. There's a section for the DAC. So I'm not using this as a DAC, so I've got that setting turned off but you can select a bunch of different options there if you're wanting to use it as a DAC or even use an external DAC. So we'll show you the options down here. And then we'll go back up top. Over here is your network options. So I recommend setting it up as a hardwired ethernet connection. That's gonna give you by far the best performance out of this unit. But if for whatever reason you are not able to connect via Ethernet, you'll want to enable this Wi-Fi and then connect to your Wi-Fi network. Back over to the left, we've got the options for Bluetooth, which is where we set up the remote. So here you can see we've got the remote paired. And if you needed to pair a new device, you can do that as well. So we're going back out of that. Samba server, I don't have a need for that, but there's options there and then even a portable hotspot. Then back up all the way to the top, the last setting over here is just some other options for language. If you're using HDMI CEC to basically use the remote to control some other aspects, you can turn that on. You've got a power mode. How often you want the hard drive to go to sleep, keyboard setting, long press timing, and you can even install a weather app. And over here, you would select the second option here go into it and then you would plug in your city and search for it and it'll sync up your local weather.
Now there are three ways that you can control the Neo Alpha. The first method is using the included remote control. The Neo Alpha does not come with batteries, so you'll need to supply your own, which are two AAA batteries. Now when I removed the sticker on the remote, it did leave behind a lot of sticky adhesive, but with a few rubs on my finger and a paper towel, it came off pretty easily. Now the remote feels really balanced in the hand. The back of the remote is textured, while the front of the remote has a smooth matte black finish with raised rubber buttons. When in the dark, it's nice to be able to simply press any button to trigger the backlighting as opposed to having to locate a tiny dedicated light button in the dark. Now I'm glad to see Zidu chose to eliminate all of the buttons, including the red, green, and blue preset buttons at the bottom. In comparison, neither my Pioneer 4K player nor my Marantz AV7706 processors remotes offer the ability to see those colored buttons in the dark. Now the second method of controlling the Neo Alpha is using the OLED touchscreen. So I'm going to briefly take you through some of the settings on the 5 inch OLED display. Full disclosure, I didn't find much practicality in the touchscreen. So we'll go through a couple things. If I click music, you can see that it's very quick and very responsive. So I love that. I mean, it's definitely got a fast processor in this. Very, very quick. So I enjoy that aspect of it. But let's just say, for instance, we wanted to watch a movie. If I go into Media Center, the only option here would be to go into the File Manager. Then you can go into, say, my folder, the Demos folder. We can scroll down. So again, it's really quick. But if you click on something, the screen is going to go black. Oh, I clicked too many things. Here we go. Let's go back into the Demos folder. And then let's just go down to, let's just say, the Dolby Atmos Demos. And then if I click one of these, what's going to happen is the screen will go black and you cannot um, pause, rewind, do any of that from the touch screen. It's basically non-responsive until that video gets finished and goes back to the main menu. So again, I really, I don't find this super, not that it's not intuitive, I just don't find much practicality with it. One thing that is really cool though, is you are able to connect Spotify and use AirPlay, as you can see the AirPlay option there. If you click it, it's just gonna give you instructions on how to do that. And I'll show you real quickly how to sync maybe your phone or your iPad with this device so that you can stream music directly from it to the Zidu player. Okay, so here we are inside of Spotify. So I've already got some music pulled up here. If we click on the bottom left icon, looks like a speaker, it'll pop up a menu and it says it's playing currently on my phone. So you'll see the first option here says Neo Alpha Living Room. So if I click on that, you'll notice it starts playing, but then we'll also get the artwork on the front of the display, which is super cool. And the final method is using the app. Simply download the Zidu controller, click the plus icon at the top right, then choose scan QR code. Then on your home screen, you're gonna navigate over here to the apps. In the instruction manual, it does say to go to the media center, but actually what you'll need to do is go to the top right where it says control center, and you'll need to scan the third QR code. Now you can see that we're connected to the Neo Alpha. So once you're inside the app, it's really intuitive and it is really responsive. And so we can click on our file browser here, we can go back to the home button at the top left. You've got access to your apps. We can come down here to media player. So my music player, I really don't have a lot of music. Like I said, these are just downloaded just to test them and they play just fine. I've got various uh, resolutions, different file formats and so forth. So, but you can see you've got your favorites, you've got music, artists, albums. Uh, you can click on one to load it and then play your music from there. So I'm gonna back up and go into the poster wall, because the poster wall to me is just really uh, where this shines. And so um, you can see a lot of this doesn't really load for some reason. So that will eventually load, but it takes a little bit. Um, but if I go under categories, and let's just say for instance, I go to 4K. So I've already been to this page, so all of this artwork um, has already loaded. But if I back up, let's say I go to just all, you'll see each one of those just has to load, loads pretty quickly, but once those load for the very first time, you don't have to reload those again. So I'm gonna back up 
from there. But I love the functionality. It's just super, super um, user friendly. So we can click on collections. Um, and actually, let's go ahead and go into one. We'll come down here to, how about Blade Runner? So once that loads, again, just you don't have um, some of the functionality that we did with the just the regular remote control. You can see down at the bottom, I can't, I can scroll down here, but I can't actually click on somebody's picture. Nothing happens when I click on those, but when you're inside um, just the regular menu with the remote, you can, of course, uh, choose those. But we can click play, and that loads the playback controller, and you can see the video starting to play right here. And there we go. Then if we go back to the home screen, we do have our system options down here. And so to me, honestly, this is just a lot easier to navigate and to change some of those settings than it is even using the remote control um, on the regular device. Overall, I feel the Zidu Neo Alpha is a robust, high quality media player that offers a ton of flexibility, can play almost any format of audio and video, has a really slick user interface for movies, and is incredibly intuitive to use. In addition to room support, today I also received an email from Zidu stating that they've just received their Title Connect certificate. So that should be released maybe sometime later on this week. We're on the road to 100K, so be sure to like and subscribe for weekly videos. We're also giving away $30,000 in prizes, so you can check out this video here for details. And as always, you guys be blessed, and we will catch you in the next video.